This is Africa. God has crafted and designed a landscape of farmland, but it is a continent plagued with poverty. An epidemic of hunger lives here. There is farmland, but for them it does not bring forth what they desire. The farmer tills the field and sows the seed as they have done for many generations, but the yield is small, not enough. Not enough to sell or feed families for a season. To them, this is it. This is all they are allotted, something that is not quite enough. The quality is lacking and it never satisfies. But in rural Zambia, there are those who believe in Jesus, and a life of never quite enough does not settle well in the heart of one who knows Jesus Christ, so they allow us to teach them. AgriHope has come to this country. God has dropped us into this landscape. We do not fit. Our time in a field cannot be measured next to theirs. We do not sweat the way they have. We do not wait and long for nourishment to spring up from the earth the way they do. But here we are, and we know Jesus, He who fills every desire in a way that only He can. We come alongside them and say, let's learn together. There is a way to farm this land well, to make it grow, to make it sustainable. What God has provided is enough. We have created an organization that teaches, an organization that does not give handouts but extends a hand. We show them how to farm sustainably. We work together weeding the field and preparing the ground. Then we dig with purpose and precise measurements to make way for the seed. We dust the holes with a kitchen spoonful of fertilizer and then lime to balance the soil. That is then covered with soil. Now hands may plant the seeds. One, two, three in a row. Cover them with soil and finally cover the field with grasses for protection from the sun while we wait for the rains to come. They stop and ponder over what we have just completed. It looks right, but will it work? They wonder and question. Next to the newly planted field, another is measured, and they are asked to plan it in the way they have always. Compare them to one another. Wait, watch and see, see the difference. We do not extend them charity through gifts of food or clothing. For you and I know that eventually the food will be gone and that the worn, tattered clothing they wear is evidence of the fate of that type of offering. These would not last or sustain them. We do not despise these gifts they have been given. They are meant to help. But our eyes have seen how it has created a dependency. There is an expectation and a learned helplessness when they have always lived in a world where foreigners come for a time to spill out gifts, build buildings, dig wells. These things meet a need for a time, but then they break down and need repair and no one fixes them or even knows how to do so. The people wait in expectation for more foreigners to come because they will fix it. We desire to change this mindset in the people we work with by coming alongside and investing the time to teach and to train, to encourage their talents and abilities, to make them see that they have opportunities and they can succeed if they put forth the hard work. What we give them, they cannot immediately hold in their hands. We do not leave with the satisfaction of meeting many of their immediate needs, but instead we leave them with a seed that has been planted, a seed that has been planted in the ground and a seed of truth planted in the heart. The hearts in the land are desperate for change. The work is hard, but it is planned, precise and intentional. There is a way to plant a field so that it grows and the harvest satisfies, and there is a way to invest in a heart so that it cannot deny the love of Jesus and his salvation. God's glory is continually brought about in our time there and is reflected back at us in their words of gratitude, full of hope as they sing, come see what the Lord has done while standing on the field where we have sown seed together. <laughs>